Haitian lesson 22, we're gonna do some controller cleanup. Before we get started, let's go to our welcome.blade.php and let's add this div to surround the child div. This is just flex, flex wrap, justify center, items, center. What will this do? Well, we go back, we reload our page. There we go, looks a little prettier. Okay, so what are we doing today? Well, we want to clean up our controllers. So the first thing I want to do is I want to, I'm going to exit out of that, and I'm going to add a new directory, and I'm going to add auth. Now within auth, I want to move my login controller, and I want to move my register controller into auth. We're going to also be adding a reset um, or forgot password controller. Okay, so once we move these into auth, we need to go to app, HTTP, controllers, and then add the auth namespace. All right. So once we have that set up, we need to actually try to hit this and we're, it's gonna fail. So watch this. Whoops, invoker exception, not callable. It wasn't able to find the login controller. Well, that makes sense. If you remember in one of our very, very early on lessons within our config routing, we added controllers and then we added namespace. So it's going to look for all of our controllers with an app HTTP controllers. And because we changed the namespace to auth, that will not work. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna change this to namespaces. And then we're gonna accept an array of possible namespaces we can add or put our controller classes in. So it's gonna be app HTTP controllers and then we're gonna do auth. So we're now going to accept two available namespaces. One is just going to be within our HTTP controllers. And the second namespace is gonna be HTTP controllers auth. So how do we get this working? Well, let's start by going to our route. And within our route, remember we're doing, this is app support route. We're doing resolve via controller and all we're doing is we're getting our routing controller namespace and then dot class. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say namespaces is, is going to be config routing controllers dot namespaces. So we're gonna say for each namespaces as namespace, then we're simply going to say if class exists, namespace dot class, then we're gonna say controller equals namespace dot class. Finally, we're going to go out here, we're going to say throw when no controller has been set. And then we're simply going to say was not able to resolve or unresolvable, unresolvable um, action wasn't able to find controller for, and then we'll do dollar sign action make that double quotes so our variables do work. And then we'll add an apostrophe on wasn't. All right, so now that we have that set up, and this needs to be not unset, but is set. So if no controller is set, we're gonna throw an exception, unresolvable action, wasn't able to find controller for action. Otherwise, we are just going to loop through over namespaces, determine if the given controller class exists within that namespace, and if it does, we'll set controller to that namespace to class path. All right, after that, let's do composer dump auto load, and I'm gonna clear my views because I'm paranoid about those. All right, so now if we reload our page, blah, blah, it works again. So we have successfully added the ability to simply add more locations where we can define or register controllers by just going to our config routing controller and adding to this namespaces array. Sweet, sweet. Okay, so after that, the next thing we wanna clean up with our controllers is this validation stuff, right? So we're, we got it cleaned up to an extent. We're saying session validator, the input for the validator, the rules, and then the third parameter is going to be the messages, et cetera, et cetera. Well, and our register class, that gets a little bit uglier. 
how cool would it be if we could just say, okay, this is a, I don't know, store register request. And then we could do input fails, then return back. And so within this, we could remove all of this stuff, right? Our request knows how to validate itself. So that's what we're going to get set up. How are we going to do that? Well, we are going to start by creating a new support class. We're going to call this form request again it's app support form request now within form request what we want to do is we want to actually extend our request input once we extend our request input we want to add a validator and then we want to be able to access that validator we're going to say return this validator. Okay. Then we want to determine if that failed. And that needs to be a boolean. We need to figure out if it failed. So we're going to return this validator and then fails. After that, we're going to add a few, few helper functions. So first, we're going to add the two most important. This is going to be public, public function messages, and it's going to be public function rules. Both are going to return an array, and la la. Okay, after that, what we want to do is we want to add this public validate function. And remember, because we're extending request input, we already have access to all of our request data. So all we're doing is we're saying, okay, let's make this validator is going to equal the session. We're going to say validator. Then we're going to pass it all of our current input. Then we're going to pass all of our rules. Then we're going to pass all of our messages. After that, we'll say if, and we won't even do anything after that. So now we have this set up, right? We have session validator is going to be this input because again, we're extending from request input. So normally we would inject that and then do input all. Well, instead, because we're extending from it, we're just doing not input all, instead we're doing this all. Then we're just appending on to that request input object. And we're saying, okay, we're gonna add our rules and our validation messages if we fail. So that'll work. After that, I want to add two more functions. I want to say if validator fails, and that needs to be this validator fails, then this after validation fails, and we'll do return back even though this won't work, and then we'll go say if this validator passes, and then we'll say return this after validation passes and then finally we'll add one more that is this prepare for validation and then we'll do this after validation after validating or let's go after validation all right, so we just added some hooks. So here's where we actually do the validation part. But now we can prepare for validation, and then we can do something after validation fails, we can do something after validation passes, and then we just have an in general after validation, after we do anything, just like we have prepare, prepare for validation. So let's add those. We're gonna make all of these protected. We're gonna say prepare for validation, and they're just all gonna be empty for now. Next, we'll say public function or protected function after validation passes. Then we're going to say t -t 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 protected function after validation fails. And then we're going to do protected function and then after validation in general. 
Okay. So after we are done with that, here's what we're going to do. This is our form request class. This thing is, I love this setup, by the way. So after that, we're going to go to our app HTTP directory. We're going to add a new request um, PHP class, or sorry, directory. Then we're going to add another form request. And then we're going to use form request as request. Class form request is going to extend request. App HTTP request. Oh, I did that wrong. It needs to be app support form request as request. All right, just like that. Now what we can do is we can go to our only two forms that are currently validating. So like this session validator. Um, so we have our login controller and we have our register controller. And so we're going to create our login controller. And then we're going to create, oh, my bad, not login controller. That is going to be the store method on our login request. So store login request. So that's going to be store login request. And then our register controller is going to have the store register request. All right. Both of these are going to extend from form request. Extends from form request. And then we are going to first go to our login controller and we're simply going to get our rules right here. We're going to say public function rules and then we're going to return them. All right. Now our login controller, instead of injecting request input, is going to inject store login request input. After that, we're simply going to get rid of that. We're going to say, if input fails, return back. So we still do have to do that part unless we want to add a global middleware, which we probably will do in the future. But once that's set up, we can remove our validation there. Then we can say successful equals that. And we'll do auth attempt. Da -da -da. We do if successful, return redirect to home. Otherwise, flash the session and return back with whatever errors we get from our auth attempt. All right, so we just cleaned that up quite a bit. Um, so, fails, and that's going to be form request. Is that fails or failed? Failed. Okay, so that's going to be failed. All right. Next, what we want to do is we want to copy. This is where you'll really see the power of the store of the form request. We want to copy this into our store register request. And we want to say, okay, public function messages. Then we want to return that array. And that's actually going to be rules, not messages. Next, we'll copy our rules or our rule messages. We'll go back to our store register request, and then we'll do public function messages. We'll say return, and then we'll return all of our validation messages when a given rule fails. All right. After that, remove request input, and we'll do store register request. Da 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 da. All right. And then we'll do if input failed, then we can return back. Okay, so also notice that we do a few things 
to our input after it passes. We forget the CSRF value, we forget the CSRF name, we forget the confirm password input, and then we actually encrypt the password. So let's do this. Let's go right here, and then let's actually go back to our store register request. Now remember, if we go to our form request, we have prepare for validation, you have actually validate. If this validator fails, and this needs to be ask, then this after validation fails. If this validator passes, then this after validation passes. So what we really want to do is we want to say, okay, after the validation passes for a store request on a register controller, protected function after validation passes, we just want to go right here and we want to say this. We want to forget the CSRF value. We want to forget the CSRF name, forget the confirm password. And then we also want to say the input password is now encrypted. It's the SHA-1 encrypted input password. And I like moving these to the top because rules and messages are in most form request validators. After validation passes or before validation, um, those ones aren't in every one, so sometimes they'll be missed if they're at the bottom instead of the top. So, I don't know, just something I like doing. Okay, so now in our register controller, we can get rid of basically all of that jazz. So, just to give you an idea, we went from this, ooh, yeah, we went from all of this, all of this stuff, to this. If input fails or failed, return back, and then we just want to do store register request and la la. Okay, so that's what we want to do. And it looks pretty good, right? We were able to get rid of all of that code, which is awesome. But there's one last thing we need to do is this is using dependency injection. For dependency injection to work, the requests, the form requests that we add here, they need to be binded to our service container. So we're going to treat these much like we treat our middleware. So first we're going to go to Bootstrap Foundation. We're going to go HTTP kernel. And within our HTTP kernel, we're just going to add a public array, and we're just going to say requests. After that, we're just going to say global request validators, validators, validation, or injectable um, request input validator, form request validators, just like that. All right, so we're going to copy that, and now we're going to go up to our actual app HTTP HTTP kernel. Now within here, all we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, requests, and then we're going to say requests, and we're going to say slash store login request class, and then requests slash store register request class. Just like that. So now we have registered our request. But before this works, what we need to do is we need to go to route context. And this is our middleware route context. This is our very first middleware that is ran. And then we just need to set it up. So we, so we'll do this. We'll do kernel equals app resolve HTTP kernel class. We're going to do new HTTP kernel just to get that imported. Oop, I think I did that one wrong. Where are we at? Route. All right, we're just going to go slash app, slash HTTP, slash HTTP kernel. Okay. Then we're going to say collect, and then it's going to be kernel requests, 
for each request, so all we're doing is we're just getting this array of requests. We're saying for each request, we're going to have our form request class path, and we want to bind that form request to our container. So whenever we need it, it will resolve it and automatically and we're going to do this. We're going to do whenever we need it, it will get it. It will resolve and instantiate it, and then it will automatically validate it behind the scenes. So we're going to say request. We're going to say route. And we're going to say input validate, and then we're going to return our input. So this is a little higher level right here, but basically all we're doing is we're saying okay. Within our kernel, we are registering requests. For each request, we're looping through and we're binding that request. So what it would look like is it would actually be like app bind, and then it would be like, uh, I don't know, register store or store register request class. And then all we're really doing is we're doing function and then whenever we need this from our container, whenever we inject or type hint this class, it knows to resolve that class from our container by saying new form or new store register request. And then it's going to say request route, but instead of just instantiating what it's doing, is it's saying, okay, we need to get the form request or instantiate the form request. We're going to say, function and then it's going to say use form request but don't just return the form request we are going to return the form request but before we return it what we want to do is we want to use the form request and validate it and then we return it so we're binding each form request we're saying return the form request but before we return it we just want to run or trigger that validate method so that's all we're doing right here in this fancy loop that can be confusing. Um, and then we just, of course, register our request right here. That way we know what our requests are and what we need to validate. They are only grabbed or validated when we inject a request into our controller. So on this request, when we hit this store, method on the register controller, the only thing resolved from our container is the store register request. Now I do notice that in our HTTP kernel we do have a little bit of an error. So store register request, there's a capital E right here, make that lowercase if you guys made the same typo, and uh, everything should work properly. Um, so if we reload our page and we go back to register, we reload, we do properly get our errors. So again, if we were to add the password and the password, then that error goes away. So now that we have that set up, let's move on and let's go see what else we can clean up. So we have this auth, right? That's the uh, support auth. So first, what we can do is we can add its own validator. So an attempt session validator, we're going to do this. We're going to say validator is going to be the session validator, compact email, password, email, password, password exists, password exists. All right. Then we're going to say if validator fails, return false. Then if it passes, we still want to get the user, but we want to get the first user. All right. Then after that, we simply, because we know the user exists, because we ran um, required user password, required user's email, we know the user exists, and we can get them by their email. So, we're going to remove that part. We're going to say first. Then we're simply going to say, okay, we also know that the given password exists. The one caveat is we need to make sure that we use SHA-1 here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say ID equals user ID. We're going to say email equals user email, and then we're going to say password 
equals user password. After that, we're simply going to say session set user compact ID email and password. And then return true. All right. So that should work there. So after that, what we want to do is we want to do t -t -t ID equals null, email equals null, password equals null, and then we want to do session, set user, and then we want to do compact ID, email, password. Just like that, and la la, the user is able to log out again. Now we can replace this, and we can do if the session does not have, if the session has user, with that exclamation in the front, return false. Otherwise, we're going to do session, git, and then user. Just like that. And then we will do return session, user get the first user based on those credentials, and la la, we should be good to go. So let's do a composer dump auto load. Let's do a PHP slim view clear. And let's go back and confirm that if we reload, everything still works without breaking completely. So let's go and let's do t -t 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 -horn at clean code studio home dashboard. And then let's just go slim dot auth slash still works, still works. Yeah, looks like we're good to go. So guys, that is the controller refactors I wanted to get set up before we move on to our next step. Um, oh, actually, within our login controller now, let's do... Okay, so if we'll do fails, and we'll do not that, and then we'll do if fails, then we can just do return back, we no longer need a sesh because, or flash the session because we're doing that in our login attempt. So, now we can just do if fails, return back, otherwise return redirect to home, just like that, and then we can do, da da da, that works, and then within our register controller, the last thing we want to do is user force create and put all. We want to do fails equals not auth attempt user email, user password. Then we want to say, okay, if fails return back. Otherwise, return redirect home. Just like that, okay. So now we should be good to go right there, right there. Um, only other thing I'm a little worried about is, ah, we use SHA-1 right here. Okay, so let's refactor the SHA-1 and we're gonna go back to our request, our store login request. We're going to do protected function after validation passes. We want to do this password equals SHA-1 password and then this password. And we're going to do actually prepare for validation. This password equals SHA-1 this password. Um, that should do the thing. The reason we're doing that is just so, well, I guess we can do that after validation. So we're going to do after validation passes. And the only reason we're doing this is because in our login controller, we have to do SHA-1, but we don't really want to do SHA-1. We just want to check if we can log in or not. Um, if we can log in, then we want to redirect home. If we can't, 
then we want to return back. And so register and login end up doing the same exact thing with the one exception. And that exception is that the register controller force creates our user using our input, all input. So yeah, guys, that is all we got. Um, next time we're going to start setting up forgot password or reset password. And we're actually going to set up the ability to email the user a unique link that is secure. They get redirected to that unique link um, via clicking through to it on their email address. We'll email them and then they'll reset their password from that link. And that way we are actually following best practices. So that's all I got today, guys. See you guys next time. Second.